Hello, today I'll be covering the Spica flat fielder. This is a LED panel, 15 by 15 inches, used for amateur astronomers in creating flats. Uh, let me first start off by saying I don't work for Spica. Spica has not asked me to do this, nor am I being compensated in any way by Spica. But I am a happy owner of the Spica flat fielder. So let's go ahead and open this up and uh, get the parts out and let you see what uh, what it all comes with. So these are the items that are included in your box with for the Spica flat fielder. Uh, kind of say that uh, when it comes, it's neatly uh, packaged with uh, nice twist ties on it. But as I mentioned, I've used my unit for several months, so uh, I've just kind of wrapped them up like this for the demo. So of course you have the Spica flat fielder LED panel. It's 15 inches by 15 inches lights uh, evenly throughout the panel and it has a female plug on the end to hook up to the LED dimmer. This is the LED dimmer. It controls the intensity of the LED panel as well as the on and off functions, the uh, presets that are available, and some of the program functions. To control that LED dimmer they provide you with an LED controller so you have a myriad of uh, buttons here that you're able to select to turn the unit on and off and to do other functions. And like It's too small to really read the print, but I will go through each one of the functions when I demo the unit. If you plan on using this in your observatory or at your house, it comes with a 110 and 240 volt uh, AC power uh, adapter. So you can plug this into your spike of, uh, flat filter and leave it plugged in all the time. Or if you're out in the field and you plan on using it from a DC source, they have a DC uh, cord that comes along with an accessory plug on the end. So you can plug that into your car's accessory jack or into a battery that you have out on the field or at your house uh, that you want to use and plug into the base of that. And last, it comes with a user manual for the uh, uh, LED controller. Now this print's too small to, uh, of course, look at here on the uh, camera. I will include a screenshot of it in the video. So these are the units that uh, come with the Spica flat fielder. So let's go ahead and hook up our Spica flat fielder. We'll start off using a DC power supply. So I'll be using the 12 volt uh, power cord with the accessory plug on the end. I'll plug that into my battery's base. The other end plugs into the end of the LED dimmer, like so. And finally, it plugs into the female plug of the Spica flat filter panel itself. With our cables connected and my battery turned on, we're ready to turn on the Spica flat filter and test its functions. To do that, I'll be using the LED controller. And uh, very much like your remote for your TV at home, this device has to be pointed at the LED dimmer in order for it to accept the commands. So you're going to want to make sure you place this LED dimmer in your observatory out in the field where you're in a direct line of sight of your LED controller. Let's go ahead and turn on our spike at flat filter by pressing the red on and off key at the top of the remote. And there we go. That's pretty bright. Set at 100% value. Once again, these four buttons in the middle are the preset values. So I'm going to go ahead and press the one right above it, which says 75%. So that lowered our intensity down to 75% from full. We have one for 50%. And we have one for 25%. And one of those values may be exactly what you need for your particular camera and ADU value. If not, right above these presets, is an up intensity and a down intensity. So you can press these multiple times to change the intensity in small increments to match whatever you need for your ADU value. Let's go ahead and change this on uh, 75%. And I'm going to hit the up key multiple times here to uh, increase the uh, intensity of our light panel. And then I'll go ahead and press the 75% key to show you that it actually did raise the intensity. So I made those multiple steps, and now I'll press 75%, and we're back down to our 75% value. Below that are four program keys, 
And the one that makes the most sense to us amateur astronomers is the number one key. You can think of that as a memory location. So if you made one of these intermediate changes, you can actually record that value in the memory position number one and use that the next time you come out to take your flats. So let's try that out. So we'll go ahead and set this to 75%, which I already have, and we'll do the down uh, intensity here to lower down the intensity of the panel to a value I want, which is right about there, for example. Now to make this particular intensity in the number one memory position, all I have to do is press that key and hold it for three seconds. The unit will flash to indicate that it accepted that particular intensity into the number one memory location. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll press and hold it for three seconds. It flashed and now it's set. So the next time I come out to my observatory to shoot my flats, I don't have to sit there and make all those steps. I just press my number one key and I'm set at the proper intensity. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and change this back up to 75%. There's three other keys at the bottom as well, program keys, but these are preset at the factory. Number two is a flashing, so it flashes the unit on and off, such as that. Maybe not something I'd have use for, but for particular photographic applications, it would be a benefit. Number three is a ramp up and down in intensity, such as this. And number four is a combination of ramping up and down in intensity and flashing the unit. There you go. So that's the functions of the Spica flat fielder. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it was useful for you. If so, please give it a thumbs up.